Go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, it's Carter Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Night. History is Night. Friggin' what up, dude? Fired up to be back in the studio with Aaron on the sticks. Dude, what up, Aaron? What up? Dude, just freaking chilling right now. Posting up over here, dude. Feeling good, dude. Feeling friggin' dank, dude. You know, I'm having those... You know when you're going to bed at night, dude, you're brushing your teeth, you're thinking over, you know... Oh, hey, that, that one joke went pretty well uh, with my coworkers over the water cooler, you know? <laughs> You know, a nice callback to, you know, Nate's comment about donuts in the morning. And, oh, man, that was good stuff, you know. And just thinking, you know, oh, hey, I called my mom today. I felt good, you know. Sometimes, you know, I'll be brushing my teeth and I'll be like, man, I freaking botched those jokes. You know, should have called my mom, dude. Freaking, you know, should have been, um, you know, more aware of other things. Just recapping, you know what I mean? And like I say, I've been, I've been freaking stoked, dude. Brushing my chops and just feeling good about it, dude. Um, except I thought <clears throat> something caught up with me and I, I think on a few pods back I think I mentioned I was really singing the praises of uh, Scottsdale Arizona and then I was like yeah dude great skiing in Scottsdale good good shit day. you never think skiing in the desert what the hell who would have thought fun city whole time I was thinking of Flagstaff yeah <laughs> yeah there are there are mountains but they are not large yeah uh, in Scottsdale yeah, I mean, you can get a nice steak. Scottsdale's a good city to go with your dad and get a steak <laughs> and maybe hit the links. And that's a bit. Dad's like Scottsdale. And, you know, freaking outdoorsy people enjoy Flagstaff. It's a ski town, dude. The yeah. whole time I was talking about Flag, didn't had no idea. went to the Grand Canyon. It was dank, dude, um, with my freaking dank-ass fiance, dude. And uh, what, a, what a legit time. Dude, we saw elk, bro. Elk oh, are wow. bigger deers. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Thought it was the same shit. I knew a moose, but this is all the same family, right? You know, you got your... Well, what's like the scientific term? You know, like equestrians, horse, bovine is cattle, you know? Um, what's elk, dude? Yeah, look it up. It's game, I guess. I don't know, dude. I've eaten freaking some straight up elk, dude. My freaking Jeff's dad shot him with a compound bow, dude. It was tight, dude. post uh, nature. This is your Jeff's dad, Joe Rogan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this finally revealed, dude, who my freaking dank fiance is, dude, Joe Rogan's long lost daughter. Does Joe Rogan have kids? I think he does. Yeah, yeah. he's got uh, three, two little girls and an adult. Uh, tight. I think I think it's three girls actually, but they're all one's an adult, two are kids. Very tight. Uh, Servus canadensis. Interesting. Yeah, I Some thought it would be like a sign or... That's what I would have thought, yeah. too. Something yeah. nice like that. Something compact. Something I could drop in, you know, as a power move in conversation over a coworker, and really just feel nice about it, then walk away. And then when I'm brushing my teeth later that night, I go, man, that, that move had more power than this electronic toothbrush, you know, taking care of my molars right now. I really just feel good and sleep like an angel, you know. Here's the thing about poetry. You should memorize one poem. Maybe Love Song of J. Alfred Prufock. Um... Anything. Uh, or a verse. I do know one. I've known one since seventh grade. Hit me with it. Uh, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a cloud be washed away by the sea, uh, Europe is the lesser. As well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of your friends or your own were, uh, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. Oh, no, no. Fuck. There's a, there's a line there that's missing. But this is for whom the bell tolls, which is a legit. No, it's uh, "No Man Is an Island" by John Donne. Mm. Um, for whom the bell tolls comes from that line. It's uh, that's what yeah. I was gonna say. This is it's uh, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Is the how how it ends? But there's a line there I missed. Um, Let me tell you what. Here's the thing about you memorizing a poem. Mm -hmm. Here's what you do. That's even more of a power move, dude. You go. Oh, I just recited that poem, but I think I botched that one line there a little bit. And the person listening will they'll have they'll be none the wiser, and you can judge them to how they react. Ooh, <laughs> they like that you botched it, dude. They're weasels, dude. You know, if they still <laughs> respect you, and it goes right now, dude. I got nothing but respect. And then you now we're having a conversation about for whom the bell tolls, and that's an allusion to this freaking dank ass poem that you just recited by who's that by? John Donne. 
D O N N E. D O N N E. Assuming, obviously, an Irishman. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. Maybe he just visited the island and really was struck by it and every, had a whack. Sorry, the, the, line, the line I forgot is every man's death diminishes me, for I'm involved in mankind. Therefore, never sent to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Yeah. Mm, an empathetic poem. A poem about, you know, being connected mm-hmm. to all of man. I love that. Yeah. I freaking love that. Super, super dank, dude. Limericks were always like naughty poems. I remember there was like a book of limericks we had growing up and I would just read them. It seemed like there was always like, you know. It's the most fun rhyme scheme. Yeah. It's nice to have a little bit of structure. You know, now with free verse stuff, like you can just get away with kind of whatever. But poetry recitings are freaking dank things to go to. And when the world opens back up, you're going to find me at one of those, dude. Probably posting up in a beret, dude. Sipping on like a a tea latte, but not with oat milk because it blew me up. I thought I was going to be into oat milk. I was really excited to turn a page. I'm, I'm getting on the train. Sort of didn't agree with my tum-tum, dude. But it could be something else, dude. You know, could be the pastrami breakfast burrito that I ate. Could also have been that. Maybe that did the heavy lifting and the disagreement going on in my bowels. The pastrami brick, pastrami does pastrami will shut you down for the day, dude. If you eat that, you're done. You're done, dude. You got energy, dude. You need someone to calm down, dude. Aaron, when you're when you get your kid, dude, when your kid's gonna be bouncing off the walls, dude, feed your kid some pastrami. <laughs> shut them down. <laughs> Give your kid a Reuben, dude. You know, if you're eating a Reuben, you're not moving. That's what they say. It's actually what I say. That's my poem, dude. It's free verse. One line. If you're eating a Reuben, you're not moving. What up? Late. <laughs> dude, before we hop into our um, historical share for the day, which is going to be a fun topic, dude. It's going to be a very, very fun topic. Just want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh, dude. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door, dude. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and and affordable, and that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Dude, my freaking dank fiance and I are whipping these meals up, dude. What I love is, dude, I love that they're all sized out for you, dude. Little packets of like, I don't even know what like vegetable broth was, dude. It's measured out for me, dude. I pour it in there. They tell me one in the recipe. I love it, dude. I'm not thinking. I'm just putting on a little bit of tunes, dude, having some fun, doing some cooking, dude. So, I, you know, you can hop on that train, dude. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 12Dank and use code 12Dank for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 12Dank and use code 12Dank for 12 meals and free shipping. <sighs> Treat yourself, dude. What up, dude? Friggin' Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions, and now they want to help you even more. With a Credit Karma money spend account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. <laughs> Fired up on that, dude. My Jeff and I discuss money habits. Now my freaking dang fiance and I are discussing money strategy. It's tight, dude. Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash winmoney to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash winmoney to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. Legit. Um, so today we're talking about vampires, dude. Mm. You know, we did the Imhotep episode. You know, got me thinking of the mummy, right? Sure. And then I was like a little bit inspired and I'm like, don't want why do why are vampires so popular? I feel like maybe ten years ago, like when the Twilight series came out, there's a reassurgence in vampire and in and, and popular um popular culture and stuff. Right now I feel like we have the Underworld series. Yeah, the Underworld series, exactly. We haven't had really a big vampire franchise or or, or um moment, but you know it's gonna circle back. Because, you know, vampires are, after all, eternal. And But I wanted to look at it and go, you know, we always say, say it time and time again, dude. You know, myth is rooted in some sort of reality. Or there's always a reasoning. Um, perhaps myth is, myth is justification for something in certain conditions that people can't explain due to, you know, lack of education at the time. And, you know, the vampire craze, if you will, sort of started. You know, it's a, it's a European um, origins. And... I think I uh, mistakenly said, oh, yeah, vampires on, on one episode. Yeah, they have Ivan the Terrible. No, 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 no. I was, I was mistaken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, yeah. Ivan the Terrible was actually a Russian, I think, like, the very first Tsar, actually, of, a, like, a united Russia in, like, um, medieval Europe, like, late um, 
15th century and uh terrible uh, is sort of lost in translation doesn't mean like bad or evil which is what i was thinking it actually just means like stinky <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> this guy spelled, spelled foul dude um it was like uh more so of like strict and staunch ruler and terrible to his his enemies of just like um basically men he got stuff done dude so but vlad the impaler is where we're going to start with the origin of our vampire myth dude okay and then we're going to get into something that's saying okay just based on the definition of vampire do they technically exist or not some little uh area that we're going to delve into here maybe have a little bit of a debate but before we start i just want to ask aaron would you want to live forever that seems to be a common theme in vampire <sighs> lore is you know they're cursed to live forever they have eternal life but you know they can't go out they can only go out at night and you know all of their friends will die do they turn people because they're lonely and you know dracula is always looking for love um someone to spend eternity with you know I guess it depends on like what kind of shape you're in at the time that you're bit mm. or whatever. Mm. You're like eternally. Can you like, can you get jacked? That's a great call. Or are you just stuck? Like, I don't know how you'd be stuck uh, overweight or whatever, but like. If I got bit on my boy's trip to Cabo circa 06, where I was really putting up weight in the gym and had a nice tan going, I think that would probably be prime time for me to get, to get bit. And, and I had prime horniness then, and vampires are always pretty horny, a lot of sexuality with vampires. Very, yeah. I think that's probably would have been the prime time if I had my druthers and I could pick when to be bit. That would be it. And I'd hope all my boys could too, you know what I mean, dude? We could just post up, dude. Hit freaking El Squid Row every night, dude. Go somewhere with good nightlife. Let's go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I guess it comes down to loneliness. You know, if it was just you, then maybe that'd be a bust. Yeah. You know? But I'm very good at drilling myself and I could drill myself for a long, 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 long time. I just you know? I just don't wanna like the idea of living forever but starting in the fifteen hundreds, it's like I just I never want to have lived in the fifteen hundreds. <laughs> like Yeah, I agree. If I could start now, okay, maybe I guess. I don't know. Yeah, you could see like flying cars, maybe cruise out to space. That'd be tight. Yeah. Or a complete climate breakdown, whatever, you know. Whichever, yeah, exactly. whichever is climate coming. goes. But here's the thing, if if the earth gets covered in dust, you know, from like an asteroid or some mega um extinction event, vampire might live. That's true. You, you know, gotta stake yourself in the heart. True. And we're gonna get into reasoning why those sort of um vampire sort of truths, I guess you will, um, if you will, exist. So I did create a fake band at one point uh, when I was bored at work. Mm -hmm. It was called Suicide Vampire, and the logo was a, a vampire that slit his wrist but then was drinking his own wrist. That's a fantastic band name. Yeah. I would definitely go see that band. You know what I always chose my as my band name to be? It's a reference to the movie Encino Man, where they're like, a pacifist caveman? What? Makes no sense. And I was like, pacifist caveman is a great <laughs> band name. <laughs> Also, uh, as does Wheeze the Juice. Wheeze the Juice would also be a very good, very good band name. Have you ever seen that? And this is a little off topic now, but um, the that like rockumentary called The Death of Western Civilization about like uh, yeah, yeah, because you're kind of into bands and stuff, and this is all about the punk scene in Los Angeles in 1980. It's filmed from like December 79 to May 1980. I haven't seen the first one. I've seen the second one. I've seen the okay, the one on metal and metal, yeah, the metal years. Okay. What years is that? Like 85 to 90. Yeah, dude. You watch this punk one, and you're just... Dude, Black Flag's the only band that I recognize from it. Mm -hmm. And there's some other ones that people are into punk, they're like, oh, this other band's probably way better. But dude, these performances are so raw. There's this guy in this band called Germ named Darby who just gets completely loaded on stage. He like gives the audience a marker and they draw on him, and he just like hurts his body. And dude, their their manager talking about them. It's like, it's really the fodder for Spinal Tap. This this documentary, mm -hmm. and the manager hates them so much. She's like, they're just like kids, and she's like, uh, yeah, they they started a band. None of them knew how to play instruments, 
So Darby would just go up there and put peanut butter on his body. So it was like a show. And like people would go there because it was more like this like strange, weird performance art. And she's like, and then they eventually learned to play their instruments and it got a little bit better. But uh, dude, it's, it's, it's interesting stuff, man. Uh, anyway, back to friggin' vampires, dude. Let's cruise, dude. So That lady directed Wayne's World, by the way. Yes, that's right. She did direct Wayne's World, and it makes sense. I mean, she's in that, like the whole, did she direct Wayne's World 2 as well or no? Maybe not. No, I think just separate. the first one. She's the right person to do Wayne's World. For I mean, sure. I might be wrong. I'm, I'm always confusing no, she Wayne's did direct World Wayne's versus World. like the, the one who directed Clueless. Mm-hmm. I'm both always. fantastic directors and both fantastic films and we're going to actually be ending our talk talking about pop culture and vampires but first we're going to do a little bit of the history and it makes sense for us to do that but you honestly can't yeah well, it was her okay what's okay. her name Penelope Spheris yep Penelope Penelope Spheris she crushes it dude um so we start with Vlad the Impaler okay people say he was the inspiration for Brahm Stokers, which is a freaking great ass name. I mean, come on, dude. Um, fired up on that name, stoked on that name, dude. Mm -hmm. um, so, Vlad the Impaler was born in Transylvania, Romania. Um, he ruled Wallachia, Romania, off and on from 1456 to 1462. So, he had this brutal method, um, and he, he value, he's known for like fighting off the Ottoman Empire. And, uh, he would kill his enemies and impale them on a wooden stake. So that's where this wooden stake um, myth comes in with like vampires. So people say like Vlad the Impaler was a vampire. You just heard like the legend of this guy, this ruler who freaking takes his victims, puts them on stakes and he would eat. He was known for just being like, he was this guy's a psycho, like a true psycho. He would eat and feast with his enemies, dead bodies around him. So, like, you know, when you hear those lines, like, I drink your bones, like, drink the blood of my enemies. And Vikings would know, like, drink out of the skulls of their enemies. And, um, but this guy, you know, in the, in the, uh, like I said, 1456, so like 15th century, this dude is posting up, dude, literally putting his, his victims and impaling them on posts. And then he would dip his bread into the blood of his victims. So that's where this, um, drinking blood thing sort of gets its, um, derivation from and Dracula is like the word for like evil like Dracula in Romanian and that's where Stoker gets the name uh, Count Dracula from and so it's pretty freaking gnarly dude so you've got Vlad the Impaler you can't talk about vampires without talking about him you can talk about vampires without talking about Ivan the Terrible my bad dude so then you get into this whole thing of okay why are they living forever? What is this deal with um, aversion to light and garlic and all these things and having to drink blood and then the teeth and everything like that? Um, and so you hear about this Vlad the Impaler and you're like, what's going on with this guy? And you know, he's a wealthy dude who's sort of, um, you know, when you talk about vampires, there's a, an inherent um, xenophobia to it. It's always somebody different and outcast to society, you know, and people are sort of drawing their own kingdoms and lines and people fear the unknown and people don't understand. And how do we explain it? A lot of times we explain it with myth. Um, even, even in today, you know, people don't want to go get a shot because you're going to be tracked by the government or something like that. <laughs> it's like, why you already got a cell phone. Let me tell you PSA. If, you're, if your reasoning is you don't want to get vaccinated and look, you can't put in force anyone to get a needle in their arm. And I don't want to say you got to do what you got to do, but I don't think you're being tracked via a shot. That's all I'm saying. And look, I'm a staunch guy. The only way Uncle Sam's getting my DNA is if he sucks on my dong and takes it in the load. It's the only way he's getting mine. <laughs> Aaron, am I getting too insane over here? Just, just air. Just going off the rails. Maybe that's... <laughs> maybe we'll have to... <laughs> All right. So in the Middle Ages, when plagues would decimate towns or sm small epidemics or whatever, you know, people would get, you know, boils on the skin and they'd have these insane symptoms and people were religious, right? You know, Christianity was, you know, spread throughout Europe 
And how did you explain these things to people who are losing their loved ones? Whole villages are dying. Why is this happening? Is the town cursed? A lot of times it was easier to keep control. And, you know, if you are, you know, the ruling class or even the church itself, you have, and that's sort of where like the, the devil comes in with this vampire myth. And you say, oh, this people, it was a vampire. It was someone in the night and everyone can fear it. And then you pray against it. It strengthens the church. It strengthens community. So sort of, a, it's sort of a binding um, thing. I mean, I guess you could say fear is being used for somewhat of, of good in that, even though people aren't quite understanding, but everyone's buying into it. And that's what it's becoming a team aspect. But there was a um, disease that actually wasn't recognized until like 1911, which I think was a few years after Stoker's novel came out. So I don't think he knew about it. He might have known about it, but it was called, um, and I'm probably going to say it wrong, Porphyria, P-O-R-P-H-Y-R-I-A, right? So this disease caused blisters on the skin. Um, When you were exposed to sunlight, it was very, very painful. Um, And there's a a strong correlation of how this could have been um, linked to the vampire legend. So a few more um, details about it, dude. Coming your friggin' way, dude. So, and you know, we have the vampire like a Nosferatu, right? Like we think of vampires now like sexy. You know, you got... We're not talking vampires from frickin', um, what's the Pitt movie, dude? With Pitt, Banderas, Cruz, uh, Interview with a Vampire, and Christian Slater, sexy dude, but just some of the worst on-screen energy of all time in Christian Slater, I gotta say. But, uh, you know, your Nosferatu, maybe even your Count Dracula, admittedly I've never read the novel, um, but uh, you have this very disfigured-looking long fingered fangs, um, very pale. Um, and th- that's sort of your classic vampire because you have this disease, por- porphyria, where you have an extreme sensitivity to sunlight. It would cause facial disfigurement, blackened skin, and strange hair growth. Uh, oftentimes the gums would recede, recede. That's actually, you know, teeth are an over- overall indicator of health. You know, a recession of the gum line could be due to many things, but it was extreme in this case. So that's sort of where this fang myth comes in because the gums would recede because you'd be very, very unhealthy. Um, And they would say uh, it would affect your kidneys um, negatively. So a lot of times you would end up, uh, sorry, this is getting a little bit gross, but you would pee, um, there'd be urine, uh, excuse me, blood in the urine. And so people not having a modern, um, you know, education on medicine would go, oh, they must be drinking blood. And so that's sort of where this um, drinking blood myth comes into. And also the sulfur content of garlic um, would be like an onset of um, the disease. So like symptoms, you know, you could have the disease and it w- you could have sort of outbreaks with it. Um, and there's honestly even today like not really any cure. There's just there's treatment plans for it. But um, basically you want to avoid sulfur, right? And the sulfur content in garlic Um, because people were using that as more of a a common spice at that time, um, would make them break out. So that's like, oh, vampires can't have garlic. Um, And then also you have this myth, vampire common myth of like they can't see the reflection in their mirrors, right? Because they're undead, they're ghosts. That's as simple as people with this disease um, being sort of disfigured, receding gum lines, they would probably avoid mirrors. So that you could see how that could get lost in translations over the years. And then, um, you know, fear of the crucifixion leading back to like the evilness. I sort of mentioned this earlier of, you know, explaining academics or epidemics or a small, um, a plague sweeping a village. And it's like, Oh, were these people sinners? Were they bad? Were they evil? Um, you know, the, the church would sort of lean into that and say, um, you know, vampires would get burnt at a stake and that's a cross. So, you know, people, you know, a test for vampirism, um, which I'll get into in a little bit. It's sort of, it's sort of like a witch hunt type thing. You know, people would be like, oh, this person is the vampire in our village and they're the one who's stalking at night. And the, the disfigurement um, maybe wasn't so like, they would say like, oh, they got bit by a vampire and that's when they would get the disease. So they would still fear that the vampire was out there somewhere. You know, it wasn't like a, a total fix all so people would sort of have witch hunts blame other people i'll get into a famous case took place in rhode island in a little bit but um 
yeah, that's sort of um, where your vampire myths come from, and it's linked to this medical, um, this disease, porphyria, and it's just friggin' pretty gnarly, dude. So it's just a classic thing of people explaining things, explaining the unknown with to the best of their abilities. Um, and then, of course, you know, you get a lot of victims, man. It's like the, the, the witch trials and everything, which is, we should do an episode on the Salem witch trials. Um, not Salem, Oregon, which I always thought, which is the capital of Oregon, but uh, Salem, Massachusetts. Um, there's a case of Mercy Brown in Rhode Island, and um, she lived in Exeter, Rhode Island, and she was the daughter of this farmer, George Brown, and their family um, gets tuberculosis. They all get wiped out from it. And and it's interesting. It's like the community's upset about it, and they don't, they can't under, explain it. And even Mercy, she dies, right? And maybe there was some sort of upheaval in that town. But anyway, they put her body and the body, um, for some reason, her body's like put in a tomb above ground and it's in new england in the winter and so it was actually like pretty well preserved because it was like frozen but people don't understand that like you know freezing stuff will prevent decay and everything to any degree at at, at, uh this time so they take her out of the tomb because they're like well what's going on why did that whole family die like were they evil were they sinners and maybe some of the neighbors were like no no they weren't like they're good people and they're like oh do we need to burn their bodies and it's a christian community and that would be um you know you want to have a proper burial and everything and uh they basically just blame mercy because when they take her body out of the tomb they're like oh it's not decayed enough she was a vampire she ended up uh you know murdering her family and killing them and that's why and so what they did was they cut out her heart and then they burned it and then they fed the ashes to her sick brother who had tuberculosis and guess what happened? Yeah, he died. So there's casualties of this misinformation, dude, around vampires, vampirism. But there's also great stories that come out of it. And I mean, not saying like that's a good story, but I'm saying the, the uh, you know, like Twilight. And I'll, I'll back this. I enjoyed the Twilight series. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Oof. You know, Blade? <laughs> Let's go. Blade 1, dude. Come on, dude. Legit. I mean, the Twilight series is bad. And when the little girl's eyes, dude... When frickin' Jacob imprints on Bella's daughter, it is one of the most hilarious scenes I've ever seen in my life. Very strange. And we'll get into why, how they mix up. So we sort of, what I went through right there with Porphyria, those are sort of the classic vampire beliefs that everyone knows. Like aversion to sunlight, garlics, wooden steak, crosses, you know, there's holy water in there too. Um... Drinking blood, fangs, disfigurement. You can see where you get a Nosferatu from out of that, right? Um, it's friggin' pretty interesting. And then this is where I, I mentioned earlier. I go, what about are vampires real? I mean, Aaron, I can tell you right now, like, I don't believe vampires are real if there's people that live forever. Ooh. Do you believe that, Aaron? I do not, I do not believe they are real, no. Okay, but let me tell you this. In a sense, there is truth to vampirism because, of course, you guessed it, there's groups on the internet where people um, will say, they want, they say, look, I'm a vampire and I need blood. And then there's other people who will send blood, private donators, to these people to drink them. And then, you know, they'll film it and it's sort of like a uh, subculture of vampirism. Gross. Dude, if my kid's into that, he's grounded, bro. I'm telling you right now. Maybe he's not grounded. Honestly, he, he's social, I'm socializing that kid. You're going out, bro. You're playing soccer. You're joining a team. You're going in the sun. Let's go, dude. Look, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum, but all I'm saying is, I don't know. Shouldn't be your yum. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> then there's vampirism, dude. It's hilarious. I read this article of like, there is a form of vampirism where people will sort of suck energy from uh, social hangs. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude, schmoles. We all know about them, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious, dude. So it's very interesting. And then you sort of have this um, evolution and transitioning into pop culture. I found this dank-ass essay, dude, by Annie Shepard online, dude. And she says, and I'll quote, throughout the later half of the 18th and um the entire 19th century, dude, vampires were the subject of many poems, stage plays, novels, and penny dreadfuls, dude, throughout Europe, dude. 
but particularly in England, dude. It was uh, is interesting, dude, directly due to the peak of vampire epidemic, quote, in Central Europe in the 1730s. So, you know, we have Vlad the Impaler a few hundred years before. So then you have time for this myth to build throughout the years, 200 years later. Then you have this sort of it's rooted and it feels like it's in the past and sort of real. And so you can have all this fiction and you're sort of removed from it at this time, um, even though you still get people tried for vampirism. Um, you have a matter of, um, so then going back to her, her um, quote, um, the birth of vampires in literature, it was only a matter of time before the undead became a popular fictional theme. In the summer of 1860, Lord Byron, John Piliodori, this guy John Piliodori is quoted as, um, his poem is the one that um, Stoker really heavily uh, referenced. Percival Bichet Shelley, of course, meaning Mary, per, no, Percival Bichet Shelley, Mary Goodwin Shelley, and Claire Claremont. Um, they're all friends, and they enjoyed reading Gothic horror stories and they just, of Eastern Europe, vampires, and they um, sort of like decided, hey, we're all going to go out and try to write our own Gothic tale. And, you know, this is where you get vampire stuff on you get a Frankenstein um, story out of this so it's interesting and so basically now we're going to branch out into uh, vampires in popular culture dude but not before we thank HelloFresh dude with HelloFresh you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable, and that's why it's America's number one meal kit, dude. And I gotta tell you right now, dude, I just get fired up, dude, when I freaking text my dank fiance and go, are we hello freshin' tonight? Dude, there's no stress. It doesn't matter, do we know we got our dank little bag of hello fresh posting up in the fridge because we get a few nights at a time, dude, we get our nice little order, you know, three meals at a time, dude. We're doing the vegetarian style and it's keeping me fresh and it's keeping me lean, dude. You know, I'm not going out and not ordering the pizza, dude, or anything like that. Instead, I'm staying home and I'm making dank pineapple, pineapple freaking barbecue, poblano pepper flatbreads, dude. Instead of, you know, really packing in the cows on some other stuff, dude. It's no stress, no trip to the store, dude. Just having fun, dude, making it. And I can't wait to get freaking more. So get yours, dude. Cruise out to HelloFresh.com slash 12dank and use code 12dank for 12 free meals, including free shipping, dude. That's HelloFresh.com slash 12dank and use code 12dank for 12 free meals, including free shipping. <sighs> Treat yourself, dude. What up, dude? I got a question for you right now. Who doesn't want instant gratification? If you're looking for satisfaction, there's no need to wait. With Credit Karma money, you can win cash reimbursements for debit purchases. Sounds tight to me, dude. When you use Credit Karma money debit card, you can win Daily instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. Dude, that means if I buy my freaking dank fiance a credenza or we chip in and buy one together, dude, or winning dough. Let's go. Fired up on that, dude. Just pay with your debit card and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot and your instant karma cash will be added back to your spend account. Dude, open an account that gives me dough. Let's freaking go, dude. Where do I sign up, dude? Well, let me tell you, dude. Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash winmoney to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash winmoney to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash winmoney. Fired up on this idea, dude. Instant karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See, result, see rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Incorporated. Member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits apply. What up, dude? <sighs> Sounds like a freaking no-brainer to me. All right, dude. Aaron, have you ever seen Nosferatu? Yeah, of course. All right, have you seen the remake with my boy Defoe? Oh, you mean um, it's something? It's Isn't he something in else. that? Oh, yeah, it is. It's not called Nosferatu. It's um, but he's supposed to be Nosferatu, right? It's the filming of the movie, but he's a real vampire. <laughs> uh, I've seen parts of that one. God, what's it called? Uh, something with the vampire. Um, not Interview with the Vampire. No, no, no. Uh, Sorry for adjusting my mic, listeners. My bad, dude. It's no earthquake. What do you think of Nosferatu? Uh, I mean, it's interesting. You know, it's it's a piece of cinema history in terms of like being kind of the first horror film. Mm -hmm. um, but it's um, 
does it hold up today? I don't know. It's still kind of creepy. Like certainly the the actor playing him was super creepy. But it's not like scary when you're going to bed. Like if like if yeah. I saw The Exorcist, like if you see that today, you're going to be scared when you go to bed. Unless you're tough. I don't care how much weight you lift. You're scared, dude. Yeah. That movie scares buff dudes. That's the barometer. That's the tell. And I think the practical effects make it creepier. Wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Then let's go. I mean, what's your, what's your, who's your favorite vampire, Aaron? That's what I'm wondering right now. My favorite vampire? I mean, is it Blade? Nah. He's pretty sick. Is it my boy Colin Farrell from Fright Night? That's a great movie. It's a remake also. I never saw it. Dude, it's good. I would check it out. It's really good. Um, Vampires also have to be invited in. That's part of the myth as well. Yeah. It's interesting. Maybe that's like a unknowing thing with disease. You know, you're inviting it in to a degree if you aren't taking baths or, you know, kissing people who sneeze. Shadow of the Vampire is what it's called. Mm. With uh, John Malkovich. Uh, Love Malkovich. Who does? I mean, yeah. Uh, I would believe Malkovich is a vampire. If you told me, if you told me Malkovich... Adrian Brody, William De- Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe yeah. If you told me these dudes were actually vampires, I would believe you. Michael Shannon. Michael Shannon, yes. I would believe you that he was a vampire, yes. No problem believing that. Probably Gerard Butler. I'd believe that. Yep. I believe Butler was one. I'm trying to find... I have this I have this paperback copy of, Dra- of Bram Stoker's Dracula that I read. Ooh. It has the worst cover art <laughs> ever. It's so stupid. I can't. I can't find it. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, I like that. I, I like my vampires hot. I like them jacked. You know, I do like. Like the Twilight vampires, you know, they're they're diamond skin. Like they break the rules and sort of reinvent them. Um, you know, they they kind of have an aversion to sunlight, but it's fine. And then they have this thing where that's not true with other vampire. Um, you know, if you're sort of sticking to the classical myths based on the. Um, the disease peripheria, whatever the heck I was called. Um, the vampires in Twilight, they have powers unique to each of them that grow from reading minds to controlling the elements of nature. Some of them have more passive talents. When a human is transformed, basically the, the whole theory of Twilight is like when you get transformed into a vampire, your strongest trait as a person when you're brought to the new life as a vampire is um, intensified and heightened after the transformation, which in... Um, some cases creates a supernatural power, um, but you don't control these powers right away. It takes time for you um, to control them and maybe even centuries to master them since you're a vampire now. See, that's interesting to me. I think that's a cool, cool story, you know? It doesn't have to get bogged down with imprinting, dude. You know, and, and I do like the werewolves. I mean, we got to give a, a little shout out to uh, werewolves while we're talking right now. Um, also, um, lycanthropes, which is actually different from Isn't that a, werewolf? a werewolf. So that's the thing. It's a common misunderstanding where it's the same, but it's not. A werewolf is a fictional made-believe thing where it's like um, basically sort of it's not rooted in a disease like vampirism is, but uh, it sort of explains deaths and, and tragedies in a way Um and also is rooted in probably, you know, maybe someone has like alopecia or something in a villager. Um, but a lycanthrope is somebody who even today can exist, generally a serial killer or something like that, will justify their behaviors because they'll have a sense of guilt about it and say, oh, I am a werewolf. My desire to, you know, taste human flesh or, or go and kill people is because I am this werewolf. So it's sort of put on it's a self belief in that Hmm. rather than like someone saying, Oh, I'm a werewolf. Uh, just for like make believe or other people saying it, you know, that was at least my understanding of it. Like there's a, there's a subtle nuance of difference there. Um, but yeah, dude, werewolves, you didn't want to be accused of being a vampire or a werewolf in, um, you know, in Europe, in the 1700s you did not want that dude because 
and especially earlier, you would be, to test if you were a werewolf, they would cut your skin, they'd shave your skin and go, oh, there's got to be hair under there. Of course, they would never find it. Oof. Also, they would, they would, they believed that there was like a, like a wolf's tongue, a prickly thing. So they would cut your tongue, see if there was a, you know, little freaking prickles under your tongue, dude. And if you're a vampire, you know, and they believe you're a vampire, they'll put you in the sunlight and then that you're going to pass that test. Um, and then really they're just going to have to burn you at the stake and see if, if you don't get set on fire and guess how that ends. Um, freaking unchilly, dude. I guess my favorite vampires are the ones in 30 Days of Night. You saw that? Josh Hartnett I, movie? No, I haven't seen that. Dude. I mean, they've got to go home and watch now. Yeah, it's like from 2004, maybe. Hartnett kind of has that Christian Slater energy for me, though. That That's sort of that vampire blood-sucking energy-sucking energy, you know? Well, he's not a vampire in it. Okay. Does he get killed pretty soon in it? No, he's the star of the movie. Ah, and it's good? It's good, yeah. It's it's based on a graphic novel. All right. I'm checking it out. I'm watching. I'm watching. I mean, dude, Hartnett almost tanked Black Hawk down. And that movie's got everyone in it. Yeah, that's true. And the dude almost tanked that movie. I mean, come on. Lucky number 11, dude? Phew. I think he did tank that movie. Probably. Because it should have been good. Well, the title probably is. Yeah, that's a, one too. of the stupidest titles I've ever heard in my life. Um, anyway, dude, I mean, I'm fired up on vampires, dude. I'm fired up on the themes, you know, fear, power, sex, dude. Not fired up on xenophobia, but I love these recluses. I love, you know, being the ability to be all knowing and living forever. And, you know, is that a curse? Probably. But unless, you know, you and your boys can get turned all at the same time, that'd be sick. And you could have sick tans. And maybe if you had twilight rules. Maybe you guys all move up to a lake in Washington and just straight up kneeboard and water ski together and, you know, suck blood of elk, dude, because elk are pretty big. You can all probably share those. I've seen those now. And so I think it could be a dank lifestyle. You know, you just got to be legit, dude. So your skin could be diamond and that's tight. And you could be hot because I like these new modern hot vampires, you know. Do you watch Buffy? Oh, dude, I mean, like, Salma Hayek and... and uh... Right. Dust Till Dawn. Dust Till Dawn, great vampire Woo. movie. Aaron, thank you for remembering that. Woo. Yeah, I know. That They're all coming to me clutch. now. Now everything's coming to me. Uh, yeah, the, let's go. The TV series, uh, What We Do in the Shadows is amazing. Fantastic. Great Very vampires. funny. Very funny, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, either the movie or series, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Pee Wee, Paul Rubens. Great vampire. Speaking of drilling yourself, Christy Swanson. She was actually from Mission Viejo, not far where I'm from. Yeah, she's incredibly gorgeous. Um, you ever seen the movie The Chase with oh, Sheen? Yeah. Dude, I referenced that movie. I referenced it like two days ago. Really? I really referenced that movie all the yeah, time. Great movie. Great movie, dude. Chase. Telling, underrated movie. I was telling my dog, I think. Mm. She's. He's confused. He's confused you. <laughs> or you're confused. Yeah. He's confused you at the very end. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always quoting that movie. Dude, it's a great movie. They bone while driving. The whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, they're going to crash. Yeah, there's no way that happens. There's no way you It's live. hot stuff. It's good stuff. The Chase, check that out. And then check out, what's the other movie you mentioned with Josh Hartnett? The 30 Days of Night. All right, I'm checking that out, dude. Yeah. Unfortunately, Christy Swanson went way off the deep end, right wing. Oh, did she? Man, she's yeah, from, yeah. you know, the O-Sizzle. That'll happen. Um, all right, let's take a few cues then bone out, dude. What up, Strider? I have a cue for the pod. I have a sick must mustache. I've included a photo for reference. Oh, I'm looking at it. It's nice. He's in some nice, looks like volleyball, 80s volleyball player, Karch Karai style shades with a thick, thick, it looks like he's going to write me a traffic ticket stash. Mm -hmm. All right. My mustache means a lot to me, and I was incredibly stoked when my GF of six years decided it's my best look and fits my personality well. Love that. My issue now is I want more. I have visions of myself driving down a desert highway in an 83 motorhome with the windows down and a thick flowing mullet whipping in the wind. The vision will remain a fantasy if my GF has anything to say about it. She is incredibly dank, but doesn't want me to live out this dream. She says it won't look good, but she thinks Gardner Minshew is hot. So what is the difference? How do I convince my GF to let me get this Mississippi mud flap into production? Thank you. Justin. Oh. I mean, dude, I'm all for it, dude. 
I think you just got to grow it out. It's gradually just going to happen. And, you know, it's your truth, dude. It's your truth. And you got to say, you got to tell your dank GF, you're sitting shotgun, rocking whatever hairstyle you want next to me in that freaking dank ass 83. Okay? So, you know, it's probably not the best advice, but she is attracted to Gardner Minshew. He's rocking that look. I've seen you. You're an attractive guy. You got a nice stash. Maybe her argument is, look, I'm, I'm glad she supports the stash. But um, maybe she's just thinking, maybe if it ain't broke, don't fix it. She likes the way you look now. And look, every man wants more. Maybe only fools are satisfied. I don't know, but you got to find out where that edge is. So I think you got to grow that, that mullet out and see if that's the edge. And if she really, really hates it, then it's a sign of love if, if you clip it, you know. Um, but I think you got to go for it. Aaron, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. I used to think mullets were so hilarious. Uh, I had a big thing in my binder in high school of just just people with mullets. I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> I would show it to people. I love that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think if you want if you want to maintain this lady, you uh, you you maintain your hair. Yeah. They've been in a while, six years. I mean, look, hey, but that's love. You know, love, sometimes you have these requests that aren't quite logical and you have to sort of fulfill them for your partner and that's part of it. But it sounds like, you know, he's not doing it ironically. It's his truth. And I've seen his look and a mullet would look good on this dude. You know, he'd look like he could be in the bullpen of, you know, some minor league team. I don't know, man. People still have it. It's it's incredible that there are people out there still I've unironically got having it. I almost got one. It's pretty disgusting. I mean, it's not quite, but I'll tell you right now, my dank ass fiance does not think it's dank. She wants it gone too. But I can't. It's got to stay for a while. It's got to stay. I wish I could grow a stash, but I can't. Facial hair is just not in the cards for me. All right, let's keep cruising. Hey, Strider, what's up, bro? I have a question for you. I will set the scene. You've been contacted by NASA to make a time capsule that they are sending into space. I already love it which will continue to move in a direction until it has inevitably found an alien racing around in his UFO or finds its way onto another planet, which we will assume has aliens. What are you putting in that capsule? NASA has told you they want at least a couple of movies and also a dank mixtape that encompasses all the that the Earth has to offer. What movies slash songs are you sending up? Also, what else are you sending up? Um, this guy, he says, for movies, I'm sending up super bad, The Notebook, and Up. Great choices. He included a playlist on here that I'll check out. All the love from Parma, Ohio, suburb of Cleveland. Mike. Beast, dude. Great question, Mike. Um, I mean, dude, I'm fired up to send a freaking Times capsule to some aliens, dude, and I want them to get stoked. Okay, that's my mission. I want them to be stoked. So I'm going to put Pennywise Bro Him Tribute in there. Okay? <laughs> I'm probably going to put some throwback insane clown posse. I'm probably going to definitely put some sublime in there. I'm going to put a, you know, I want NASA to put some technology on an A's burger breakfast burrito. Okay, I want that frozen so they can enjoy those good eats. Probably make them want to cruise out to Earth and say, what up, once they freaking sink their chops into that. But maybe I'll put a little pastrami in that puppies to slow them down in case they're a violent race. But honestly, they'll be so stoked they're going to be benevolent no matter what because I'm going to put Con Air. Of course Con Air is going in there. Of course, the entire Fast and the Furious series. Of course, Gladiator. Of course, the Band of Brothers series. Um, maybe a throwback to Kazaa, Boat Sex with Jenna Jameson. 99% <laughs> download, just to let them know I got it there so it would never fully download to my computer so my mom couldn't find out. Maybe I'll send them that, let them know this is how we make love, this is how our race continues. Um, Music-wise... Oh, no, I already said music, yeah, depending on all that, dude. What else would I send, dude? Maybe I'd send my volleyball highlight reel. Show them what I'm capable of. Maybe take some videos of me doing thrusters with my dumbbells. With, my, with no shirt on, get fired up on that. I would definitely not send them Christian Schlater or Josh Hartnett. <laughs> I think that's a pretty stoke-inducing package. You know, maybe a tank, some tank tops in case they want to friggin' you know, go suns out, guns out on their planet. Probably send them that. Or maybe a nice friggin', of course, a friggin' dank ass sculpin. Aaron, what are you sending? 
Ooh, let's see. I gotta send them uh, Cure Disintegration. Mm, yeah. That's a great album. Mm. Uh, Top Gun. Yep, great. Smart. Uh, let's see what else. Jurassic Park. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, Spielberg, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably it. That's probably all they need. I think they'll get it. If they receive that, they'll get it. Yeah. Would you send them something to eat? <sighs> Maybe some in and out? Nah. <laughs> Carne asada fries? Some Ooh. carne asada fries? Yeah, yeah, baby. Let's go. Let's Maybe go. Do, maybe do carne asada chips just because the chips will hold better than the fries. But you know. They're very considerate. Very smart of you. Yeah. Good call. Great question, dude. Send some more hypotheticals like that. I love that, Dad. Makes me want to take a little baby rip and think about that some more. Um, okay, here we go. Last one, dude. Strider, what up, dude? Um, what up, Aaron? I love partying, and now that me and my boys are vaxxed up, what type of party should we throw? Just so you know, we have a house in Madison, Wisconsin. We went to the university uh, out there and are partying in the area a bit before we start our careers, grad school, etc. Thank you, Bradley. Um... I mean, a legit ass party is the short answer, but maybe he's thinking for themes. Yeah. Maybe like a glow in the dark party is pretty sick. Um, mm. Maybe a key party. Just invite a bunch of married people and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I um, mean, COVID's not gone yet. <laughs> true. True. Hmm. You know, I've said this before, seeing chicks and emo dicks is pretty nice. Put on some good, you know, Jack's mannequin and just sort of vibe. Everyone sort of just leans and dances in their own space. It's a little COVID friendly, even though you guys are vaxxed up. And it's a seldom used theme that I always imagine. With. Maybe you throw a pacifist caveman themed party. <laughs> or if, honestly, dude, throw a vampire party. You guys all do, do it at night. You know... Get a fog machine, get some dry ice, some potion, some punch, some put some Everclear and some, you know, wine punch and just act like it's blood and you guys sort of just um, dance out to some Alice Cooper and have a freaking dank ass time. Yeah. Get the uh, real costume uh, teeth extensions though, not the, uh, not the e plastic. Yeah, yeah. The plastic ones are going to fall out easy. Get, you really commit to it. Yeah. And I think that'll be fun. I think that's going to be a freaking really good ass time to be quite honest with yeah. you. Who, who doesn't love an occasional flowy shirt? Exactly. And you can undo a few buttons and you can put a cape on. It's really fun to wear a cape. There you go. And so I'm in. I think that's the move. Model your costume after my boy B. Pitt from Interview with a Vampire, dude. Very sexy. Um, right. Right. Another vampire movie, uh, Once Bitten with Jim Carrey. Oh, yeah, dude. Like his first movie, I think. Good call. Good call. Aaron with the good calls, dude. All right, dudes. You guys have a freaking stoked ass day. Thanks for cruising in and listening, dude. See you on the next one, dude. And uh, always write in with the hypotheticals, question, comments, corrections, whatever, dude. Thoughts, dude. Just reflections. Uh, Strider Wilson Treads at gmail.com. Freaking stay stoked and lit.